two and a half years ago, a startup temp company launched the Framework Laptop, a modular, user-serviceable, and upgradable, ultra-portable laptop. I snagged one of the first units off the line, Meet My Framework 13. When it arrived in 2021, it was powered by an 11th gen Intel processor. Since then, I've boosted its brain power, jumping from the 11th gen Intel to a 12th gen, and recently leveling up to a Ryzen 9. Framework, the company, champions an open and transparent culture, which along with the hardware's flexibility has made the framework a darling among Linux enthusiasts, a club in which I'm a proud member. Shortly after my framework arrived, I began throwing multiple Linux distros at it. I even shared a video detailing the performance of six popular Linux variants on that machine. Fast forward today, and I'm at it again, this time with the AMD variant of the framework. But here's a teaser, while I managed to test six distros in my last endeavor, I've only wrangled four this round, all within the same time frame. Could this mean Linux and the Ryzen powered framework aren't a match made in tech heaven? Stay tuned to find out. It's the money. Hey guys, it's CJ with your guide to all things Linux on the Framework laptop. Before we jump into the nitty gritty of today's exploration through the Linux landscape on the AMD powered framework, I've got a little favor to ask. If you're into tech deep dives without the fluff of sponsored content or ad reads, you're in the right place. Everything here is 100% community powered, no behind the scenes endorsements, just pure unfiltered tech and DIY. If that resonates with you, hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. It's more than just a click, it's your way of giving a nod to content that stays true to the game. Your support amplifies our voice and reaches more tech enthusiasts and curious newcomers. So let's dive into the Linux on the AMD framework experience. Today we're looking at four Linux operating systems, Fedora, Ubuntu, Manjaro, and Endeavor OS. But first, let me set the stage with a brief intro and disclaimer. I've dabbled in Linux since the mid 90s when a friend had me a stack of floppies loaded with something called Debian. While I do appreciate the open source model of Linux, my main use case for Linux operating systems has typically been for breathing new life into older hardware. It's been my experience that Linux doesn't always play nice with the newest bleeding edge hardware out there. This video is crafted for the Linux newbie or those Linux curious folks among us. You might have caught wind of the framework laptops buzz in the Linux community and are considering the AMD powered framework as your vessel into the ocean of open source operating systems. On the flip side, if you're a seasoned Linux guru, this might not be the deep dive you're looking for. I'm focusing on how well these distros gel with the framework's hardware right out of the box. Things like touchpad responsiveness, fingerprint reader functionality, camera, microphone, display scaling, and their impact on power efficiency or battery life. If I hit a snag, I'll seek out a simple fix that won't overwhelm Linux newcomers. For the veterans, I'll say this, my methods won't include intricate config tweaks, crafting custom scripts, or recompiling kernels. We're keeping it straightforward to paint a clear picture of what the Linux experience is like on the AMD framework for someone just starting out. Now, it's also important to point out that while Framework is what I call a Linux-friendly company, this laptop is still very much a Windows laptop. It was developed for Windows, and Windows is the only operating system you can currently get pre-installed at purchase. However, unlike almost every other manufacturer, Framework does work directly with some Linux developers to ensure the best stability of the OS on the hardware. Because of this, there are as of now two officially supported Linux distros, Fedora 39 and Ubuntu 22.04 LTS for the AMD laptop. Framework provides complete installation and configuration guides for these operating systems, as well as employs dedicated Linux support personnel for official customer support for those distros. Additionally, there are a few community supported distros. So like I said, I'll be testing four operating systems, Fedora 39 and Ubuntu 22.04 LTS, both using the GNOME desktop environment and two Arch-based distros, Manjaro with KDE Plasma and Endeavor OS with XFCE. 
we'll be checking how, how easy it is to install and configure the operating systems if all the hardware works out of the box, specifically Wi-Fi and Bluetooth access. Does the touchpad have multi-gesture support? Does the fingerprint reader work? Can you access the camera, microphone, and headphone jack? And can you scale the display? And if any of this doesn't work with the installation, is there an easy fix for it? Let's streamline our discussion by focusing first on what worked out of the box across all the Linux distributions tested. The touchpad functionality was there, offering full multi-gesture support integral to each of the desktop environments. This includes the basics like tap to click, two finger tapping and scrolling, and three finger swipe for GNOME users. Any fine tuning required can be easily managed in the GUI settings menu. The camera and microphone worked, capturing audio and video without any major issues. I also found the headphone jack worked, free from the buzzing some users have reported across various distributions, and Bluetooth connectivity was seamless with my headphones on each of the OSs. Overall, the performance is commendable, but we're not just here to celebrate the successes. Let's move on to explore the areas where a bit of assistance was necessary. In the installation process, the most significant issue I encountered was Wi-Fi connectivity. Across all distros, a stable Wi-Fi connection in the live environment or during installation was frustratingly elusive. The primary challenge centered on securing a five gigahertz connection. Ubuntu and Endeavor OS would connect occasionally only to drop almost immediately. Manjaro wouldn't connect to the five gigahertz signal at all, and Fedora wouldn't connect to any secured Wi-Fi network, though it managed with unsecured ones. After installation, the situation improved slightly with all but Manjaro connecting to both five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz networks. However, the connections were disappointingly unstable dropping frequently. Manjaro continued to refuse any interactions with the five gigahertz band. My attempt to fix the issue by disabling the Wi-Fi power save mode was unsuccessful and even completely disabled the Wi-Fi adapter in some instances. I also manually configured the basic network settings, but still no luck. Now, I do have a very new Wi-Fi 6E access point. However, considering that I've been using this laptop with the installed AMD RZ616 Wi-Fi adapter on Windows 11 for weeks without any issues, it's a letdown. Therefore, I'm reluctantly giving Wi-Fi compatibility a yellow X across the board for instability. Moving on to the fingerprint reader, those using GNOME desktop will appreciate the user-friendly GUI for setting up and registering fingerprints. It worked without a hitch. The Arch-based distributions did require some manual setup and fingerprint registration through the terminal. The process, while manual, is simple enough for a beginner to follow. Endeavor OS performed well in this regard, but I hit a roadblock with Manjaro where the fingerprint registration process failed consistently. Resolution scaling out of the box tends to be extreme, either 100%, which is quite small on the framework's display, or 200%, which may feel excessively large for some users. Ubuntu and Manjaro conveniently offer fractional scaling from the get-go. Fedora isn't far behind, it just needs a simple command line entry to enable this feature. However, Endeavor OS, despite offering the option in the display settings, seems to malfunction when fractional scaling is activated. The appearance settings menu offers a potential fix, but it didn't yield the desired results. The best stopgap solution I found was to increase the text DPI, which isn't ideal, but can make the display more readable. Ultimately, aside from the Wi-Fi instability, the out-of-the-box hardware support for the Linux desktops tested on the AMD framework is significantly more advanced than what was available for the Intel version at the comparable stage post-launch. However, a persistent challenge with Linux on newer laptops is power efficiency and battery life, particularly when compared to Windows. So I cut down the number of distros tested so I could put each distro through its paces with a four hour video streaming marathon to test out of the box battery efficiency. With the power profile set to balance, screen brightness locked at 200 nits and volume up to a peak of 70 decibels, I looped an engaging YouTube video for four hours to measure total battery percentage loss. The findings were actually surprising. While Windows 11 had a 56% battery drain, the Arch distros weren't far behind with 63% and 61% drain. Ubuntu, however, showed a remarkable 16% better power efficiency compared to Windows 11. But Fedora, my go-to for the Intel framework, had a tough time here using a whopping 87% of the battery. 
In a 12 hour standby power drain test, we saw a curious trend. Windows 11 performed best with only a 5% drain, and then each Linux distro increased incrementally, starting with a 6% drop in Ubuntu and peaking at 9% loss in Endeavor OS. Now, there are ways to squeeze more juice out of Linux. The default power profile daemon is what framework endorses, and it is the standard setup for all the tested OSs, mirroring the Windows settings of performance, balanced, and power save. But what about other Linux power saving tools? I've had decent results with TLP on the Intel framework, but it's a no-go according to framework for AMD. Testing confirmed their stance. With TLP on Fedora, my battery nosedived to 2% during the streaming test. Other tactics for extending battery life on Linux, like selecting best power efficiency mode or using tools like power top or laptop mode tools, save power by nerfing performance, sometimes by nearly 50%. While these methods extend battery life, the trade-off in performance often doesn't justify the energy savings, leading to less overall power efficiency. Personally, I'm not willing to compromise the performance of my high-end ultra portable laptop. I've invested in a 16 thread, 5.1 gigahertz Ryzen 9 powered machine to harness its full potential. When I'm working, I'm multitasking heavily. Script writing, number crunching in several spreadsheets, conducting research across multiple browser tabs, and reviewing footage in media players. I can't afford to be slowed down by performance lags. If I were content with a laptop offering half the performance, I spent half the money on a machine in the six to $700 price range. Fortunately, the battery life on the AMD framework has caught up to or even surpassed that of Windows without any need to compromise the device. That's awesome because full disclosure, after initially running a Windows and Linux dual boot setup on the framework, I removed the Linux partition over a year ago due to those power efficiency issues. Now it looks like Linux might make a comeback on my framework. So it all boils down to this, which Linux distro is going to be my daily driver on the framework and which one would I nudge new Linux users towards? Despite its official support and my past recommendations for the Intel framework, Fedora's power issues have nudged it down the pecking order for the AMD version. My top pick is Ubuntu. It wasn't just about good hardware compatibility and the best battery life straight out of the box. It's also officially supported by Framework. That means you'll get a comprehensive step-by-step -step installation and configuration guide tailored by the Framework team. There's even a walkthrough for keeping your BIOS and firmware fresh. Officially supported also spells peace of mind. Run into trouble and you've got Framework's dedicated Linux support team ready to back you up. Plus, Ubuntu is still the most used distro out there. It boasts a vast community, abundant resources, and tutorials galore to help you climb the Linux mastery ladder. And since I'm a small part of that very community, here's your first nugget of advice. The AMD RZ616 Wi-Fi adapter seems to struggle with connecting to newer Wi-Fi 6E access points when running Linux. My logs indicate it just keeps timing out. I could probably whip up a workaround, but the straightforward fix I found was swapping out the MediaTek card for an Intel AX210 adapter. In Ubuntu, this switch gave me an instant and stable Wi-Fi connection. So if you're looking to run Linux on the AMD framework, I'd recommend adding the AX210 to your shopping list along with the Ethernet expansion adapter. A hardwired connection is a trusty fallback and this little gadget worked flawlessly with every distro I put to the test. And that's a wrap on our Linux journey with the AMD Framework laptop. I hope this overview has shed some light on what you can expect. A big shout out to everyone who joined me for this Trek Tech. Your support is what keeps this channel going. If you've enjoyed the content, found it useful, or you're just feeling generous, why not like, share, and hit that subscribe button? It helps spread the word and gets these video outs to more folks like you. Thanks for watching, stay elevated, and I'll see you in the next one.